If you're doing object-oriented programming, which most of you probably are, you'll want a class browser. Under the uh, Windows menu, there is a, a Tools item, and under the Tools item are most of the windows you're about to see. The class browser is one of them. You can also put a toolbar tool in to pop up a class browser at any time, and it lets you inspect classes and see what the members are and go straight to the header file for any particular class in your application. You can also look at the classes in your application in a graphic way using the, uh, the class modeling tools from the design menu. There's plenty of documentation. From the help menu, there is Xcode help, which takes you directly to the Xcode user guide, and a general documentation item, which takes you to all of Apple's documentation on the Macintosh product line, from hardware on up. And it's 15 years worth of documentation. It's a huge amount. The installation of the documentation is as large as the installation as the developer tools themselves. It's a huge amount of information. So huge that some of it is even indexed on your local disk, but it goes to the network to get the actual content. This way you get the freshest content and we can provide you all the information that you really need. When you've got your source code written and you want to build it, there's a build results window that gives you the controls for building your application and shows you the build steps and will show you errors and warnings as they occur. You select an error and warning and it brings it up in the source code. This is called the build results window. A crucial part of the build results window, especially if you're coming from a makefile terminal-like environment, is what's called the build transcript. If you look right here, there's a little widget, tiny, obscure, mysterious, that if you click it, it discloses the secret underlife of Xcode. This is the actual transcript of the build commands being issued to the shell to execute the compiler and linker and other commands that build your product. If you open that all the way, you will see you know, hundreds of K of terminal commands and you can look at them and see them step by step. If you select a build step in the top pane, it will select the corresponding build steps in the transcript so you can see exactly what's going on with your build. And finally, debugging. Uh, when you launch your program in the debugger, you can set breakpoints, step through it, uh, step into, step over. You see uh, the stack trace, you can select different threads, you can inspect the value of variables. Uh, much of this is familiar to you for anybody who's used a, an IDE with a debugger in it. When your application is up and running and you've made all the changes you want, you may want to commit it to a source code management repository. Source code management is integrated into the Xcode editor. Uh, when you enable your project for source code management, you get an extra column in your detail view that shows the status of any file, uh, M for modified, C for conflict, for example. And you can use the SCM menu in Xcode to um, commit or check out or inspect differences between two versions of a file. This is an integrated development environment. All of these tools are in one application. So let's talk about your workflow, what you do as a user of Xcode. You edit your code, you build it, you get errors and warnings, you build it, it succeeds. You debug it, you step through, you inspect what your program is doing, you get it working, then you deliver it to customers. We're going to walk you through that workflow with Xcode. Uh, Rick Ballard is going to come up to talk you through it. Chris Hansen is going to be on mouse and keyboards. And uh, hope you enjoy the demo. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rick Ballard. This is Chris Hansen. And we're going to step you through some demonstrations of common tasks in Xcode. We're going to start out um, with a demo of creating a new project, probably the first thing you'll do in Xcode. So let's go ahead and get Xcode going. And we're going to go up to the file menu. Uh, I, I don't think we're showing the correct machine. If we could switch, please. One moment, please. Well, what we're about to show you <laughs> is we're going to bring up and create a new project. Xcode gives you a bunch of assistants, which let you start with different templates for different types of projects. Uh, here we go. All right. So you can see here we have the assistant window up. 
You get that by going to the File menu and selecting New Project. And here we have a bunch of different categorized types of projects that we can create. Let's go down to the Command Line Tool category. And we're going to start out with a standard tool. That's just a simple C command line application. We click the Next button. Here Xcode lets us name our project and decide where we want to put it. Unlike some other IDEs, in Xcode your projects can live wherever you want. And generally you may put all your source files in a project directory, but you can locate things wherever you want, really. So let's go ahead and click Finish. This will cause Xcode to create our project for us. And you see the project window, which is where you're going to spend most of your time in Xcode. So you see, as Chris Espinoza showed you earlier, there's a Groups and Files pane on the left. That top icon that has the name of the project, Hello World, and a little project icon, that's the root group. That icon represents the project itself, and it contains everything in the hierarchy of source files, resource files in the project. Next to the Groups and Files pane, you can see the Detail pane. And you see there are a few files listed there. Well, the Detail pane will show you everything in the hierarchy under what you have selected in the Groups and Files pane. So since we have the project icon selected, you can see all the file references in the project. If we click on the Products group, we can filter down and see just the file references in the Products group. You see there's one reference there. It's got the name of the project, and it's red. A red file reference is one where Xcode knows where to look for the file, but there's no file there. In this case, that's the product that we're going to be building. And we haven't built it yet, so it's not on the disk. 